The Uniform Appraisal Data Set, or UAD, is a scheme implemented by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac to standardize the transmission and format of appraisal reports in an open XML format. For you, the appraiser, this means some pretty drastic changes in the way that you'll fill out an appraisal. In this video, I'm going to show you how Appraise-It has met this challenge with an easy-to-use interface that allows you to navigate the many different abbreviations and formatting requirements with minimal disruption to the way that you work. As we open the File New dialog to begin a blank new report, one of the first things you'll notice is the new interface for choosing your report. This design features a much larger window and a search box at the bottom that allows you to search for a form by simply entering a keyword. To get back to the full list, simply hit Clear. You'll also notice that there's a new set of forms in the list just below the standard Fannie and Freddie forms. These new forms are the UAD versions of the standard forms. If you know that you'll be doing a UAD report, begin your appraisal using the appropriate UAD form. If you find out that you'll need to format your report as UAD after beginning the report, you can easily import the report into its UAD counterpart. Now that we're in a UAD report, let's take a look at some of the new interface changes that have been made to accommodate UAD required formatting. The most prominent feature is the new UAD helper here on the left fifth of the screen. This helper pane will be where you select various pull-down menus and checkboxes to fill out a UAD field. This window can be switched to the other side of the screen or undocked and moved to a different monitor if you have more than one. In the main form editing window, you'll notice that some of the fields are now marked green. Although there are certain rules that must be followed throughout a UAD report, like formatting of dates and dollar amounts, these green fields are locked and the UAD helper to the left must be used to fill them out. Let's take a look at how this works. We'll start with a multi-line UAD field. When you're not in a UAD locked field, notice that the UAD helper is inactive. As soon as you enter a UAD field with your mouse or by using the keyboard, the UAD helper comes to life. You cannot type directly into a UAD field, so to get to the UAD helper, you have two options. You can simply use the mouse and click over to the first selection field, or you can use the alternate enter keyboard combo. In a multi-line UAD field, you must first answer any selection questions. If you need help or clarification, reference the help box at the bottom of the UAD helper. It's also available to help you in non-UAD fields. Next, you can begin typing out your comments. There are two comment boxes, one for the main form section and one for the extended comments associated with the field. Here you can use any text-based F key common responses you may have set in the standard 1004 in the past. However, macro F key combos will not work. As you type, a character counter will count down the number of estimated characters you have remaining before the extended comments must be used. Don't worry about exceeding the limit. As soon as you get close to zero, you'll automatically be transferred to the extended comments text box. Unfortunately, you will not be able to use any special formatting in the UAD extended comment fields. The UAD rules dictate text only. When you're done filling out the UAD helper, you can transfer your data into the UAD field by either clicking the apply button which will keep you in the same field, by clicking your mouse into another field, or by hitting Alt-Enter again. Now let's take a look at the second type of UAD field down in the comps grid. These fields are mostly composed of selections in the UAD helper. We'll start out with the second line of the comp address. In the UAD helper, you can type out the city, state, and zip, all required by UAD, or you can simply press the Same as Subject button if it matches the subject address exactly. In the basement fields, if your house has no basement, you can click the apply button and the zero square footages will be placed into the field. So one aspect of UAD that's worth noting and that Fannie Mae thinks will be the most confusing is how to note adjustments. If there is no adjustment to be made because the comp or listing is exactly the same as the subject, you'll leave the adjustment field blank. If there will be no adjustment made because there is no appreciable difference between the comp and the subject, then you'll enter a zero. And finally, if an adjustment will be made, enter the adjustment as you normally would. Oh, another aspect worth mentioning is the formatting of your dates. All dates should be entered with a two-digit month, a slash, then a two-digit day, then another slash, and a four-digit year. So, for example, June 20th, 2011 would be entered into the report like this. And December 15th, 2011 would be entered like this. If you ever wish to check your report's UAD compliance, click on the checkbox on the toolbar 
or go to the Tools menu and select UAD Validator. The validator will check your report in its current state and show you any errors and warnings that it detects. To correct an error or warning, simply double-click on the text on the left, and it'll take you to the field in question and minimize the validator. After you've made your corrections, you can bring the validator back up and click Revalidate. Now that you've completed your report, it's time to send it to your lender or AMC. This process should remain the same for most of your clients. If you've been sending your reports through AI Ready or through some other third-party uploader in the past, you'll continue to do so and nothing should change. If you have been emailing your reports, you will need to create an XML file and email it. You can also include a standard PDF. To do this, go to the Orders menu. Next, select Create MISMO XML. Your report will be run through the UAD validator process one more time. After you've resolved any errors or warnings, click on the Next button. Here you'll be shown where your XML file and PDF will be saved. By default, they'll be saved in the Trawdata PDF folder. If you wish to change this, click on the Browse button. When ready, click Next, and you'll be taken to the PDF creation screen. This is just like the Print Commander, so you should be familiar with how it works. Once you've built your PDF, click on Create PDF. Your PDF and MISMO XML files will be placed in the selected folder. You can now attach both of these files, or just the XML file, depending on your client's instructions, to an email and send it off. So that's it. If you have any remaining questions on how Appraised implements UAD compliance, please email tech at sfrep.com or give us a call at 800-644-4051. Thanks for watching.